All right, for the final video today, a three-parter, look at that. We are going to finish up the optional rules talking about absolute power damage mechanics. So these are, this goes beyond the normal damage mechanics that you got in the, in the combat section. We covered that the other week. And this dives into how you can enhance your game with things like knockout stuns, uh, sanity rolls, and social conflict. Or some people call it social combat. So we're going to be looking. We're going to be diving into the various different aspects. Now, to be fair, I want to be very clear about this. We are not reading this word for word. These are optional rules. We're going to cover the generic systems. We're going to cover the generic concepts. We're going to read through some of it. But ultimately, uh, if you like the game and you like the system, buy the book and dive into these optional combat uh, or damage mechanics on your own. So there we go. Right. What did I say? Two sixteen. Yes. So let's just start with shock. Now, we already read shock, but apparently there's more to it. If a character suffers more damage from a single attack than the shock value, he must make an average, so target number 12, soul stat roll. Willpower, okay. maybe. If the damage exceeds twice the target's shock value, he must make a challenging soul stat roll. So this isn't opposed, this isn't versus anything, no. this is directly just a, to a, a result. Basic, yep, a target number. If the character fails this roll by a margin equal to his soul stat or less, the character is shocked and stunned, reeling from the blow or other injury. Shock it all, of, baby. He will let go of anything held. Turns into a drone. Uh, and if precariously balanced, such as on a ledge, he may fall. It takes a general action to recover from being stunned. Until the character recovers, he can do nothing except defend. Not in the okay. face, not in the face. Got it. Okay. <laughs> it's covering up like a boxer. <laughs> uh, if the character fails by a margin greater than a soul stat, the character is immediately rendered unconscious. Without intervention, the character will remain unconscious for a number of rounds equal to eight minus the character's body stat with a minimum of one round if you've got a high body. Right. So if your body's average, what what's four is average in this game? You can be out for four rounds. That's a lot. That's a lot. With, with, without assistance, and throw some smelling salts at him. Get up. <laughs> or dead fish rub um, some dirt on it get back in the game the character fails the soul stat by any margin during a shock roll the damage inflicted is stun damage the character's immediately rendered and the damage inflicted is stun damage sorry the character's immediately rendered unconscious without intervention the character will remain unconscious for number rounds equal to 8 minus character's body stat didn't we already cover this yeah the character suffering stun damage from an attacker possessing the blackout combat technique remember oh, that's, that's an optional Box yep, that's again. an optional technique that we didn't really cover, but we you know glossed over it in the, the first video. Uh, suffers a minor obstacle to the soul stat roll for such shock checks. Basically, this dude is meant to be trained to knock you out. He knows exactly where to hit you to rattle your brain and and make, make you all see Tweety Birds. <laughs> exactly. Serious injury. Character suffers more damage than the shock value from an attack that breaks the skin, such as damage from a bullet, knife, arrow, grenade, fragment, etc., has taken a serious injury. Whether the character successfully makes the associated stat roll or not. Wow. So if you remember, shock value is one fifth, right? Now let's not do one hundred. Let's let's make it. Let's tone it down a little bit. Fifty. If you take ten points of damage or more, or is it more than ten points of damage? Now I already forgot. Uh, I think it's more ten points of damage or more. It, no, uh, it's more damage in your shock value, so 11 or more. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it does specifically say more damage or, in shock value. six or more in this, sorry, six or more, 11, whatever. More than. No, it'd be 11. It's okay. one-fifth. It's one-fifth, so. Okay, uh, it. has, has taken a serious injury, whether you make the associated soul stat roll or not. So no matter what, you're suffering a serious injury. Character, character who suffers a serious injury loses one additional health point every round, or every minute if out of combat. Until given successful healing or first aid. I like bleeding rules. The problem is, is they really, really, really do slow down the game. Now, I'm not one that's, oh my god, game pacing and so forth. But what I mean by this is a lot of times players forget. A lot of times game master forget. A lot of times you have to say at the end of the round, okay, everybody's bleeding. Don't forget to mark off your extra point. You know? So there's a little bit of maintenance in there that sometimes can be frustrating. Generally speaking, I like bleed rules, but I can understand why some people wouldn't. Uh, 
So stopping the bleeding the, uh, through first aid is not enough, however. It only slows the loss of health points. A seriously injured character that has not, or sorry, that has undergone successful first aid will lose one health point every 10 minutes. So basically, you still need surgery, buddy. Undergo successful. Okay, now, no, we're, we're getting too far now. I'm sorry. This is not a hyper-realistic game. Right. It's not supposed to be. This should not even be an option. It does not fit anywhere in this game. For this, this is specifically for people who want that more. Then you don't want to play this game. Yeah, but okay. So, I, I I agree with you in the purposes of like this book specifically, but this is just generic TriStat stuff and TriStat because like the hero system it covers everything. So, uh, sure. Now, my game does something similar to this, but it's actually built around the concept of visceral damage. Matter of fact, everything else is more simplistic damage is where i actually uh ideal so i look at this and i'm like this is cool but i think heathen dog is generally right when it comes to a superhero game i'm not sure this is necessary now if you're using absolute power as your generic book you don't want to go buy the tristab book or bestum or whatever this might be for you or maybe you're playing a military super i don't know terminator type thing <laughs> I don't know. I, I, yeah. So anyway, a character may suffer multiple consecutive serious injuries as well. If so, each injury must be treated separately, and health point losses are cumulative. Yeah, yeah. I, I can it's say weird personally, real quick. I wouldn't want to do this in TriStat. No. So catastrophic damage because serious wasn't enough. No, no. This is where a building fell on you. <laughs> character loses as many or more health points as his normal maximum health points. That means you're just dead. That's, that's called dead. So, Ethan Dog has 50 hit points, and he just took 52 points of damage. So let's see what happens. That's dead. That's dead. So what, it's dead. First, make, hey, you make your average so soul stat roll, and I forget what your soul I, stat was. I can't willpower myself from under a building. Just roll. You roll. Fine, well, you're, two, fine, you're 2d6, rolling. and I forget what your stat was, but we're going to give it a 6. We're going to give it a 6. All right. 16 total. 16 total. Okay, you succeeded. That's good. I succeeded. What happens? Okay, well, if the roll fails, the character dies immediately. Great. Well, okay. Even if the health... Well, yeah, blah, blah, blah. If an item suffers... Doesn't say anything oh, about oh, if you succeed. Even if I haven't reached a negative value. So, so I don't know. Uh, as many or more... So, if I took exactly 50 damage and I had 50 health, then I'm not negative. So, technically, I'm not dead. But if I don't make this roll, I just die anyway. Okay, one of the things I've learned in, in playing role-playing games is when you do the whack-a-mole system, that's what I call it, where zero is dead. Okay, no, we'll do this. Zero is unconscious, negative one is dead, one is full health. How many times have you actually hit zero exactly? Almost never. Right. So, okay. Um, anyway, all right, so if you fail, you die. If you succeed, I guess you're alive. Well... No, you, you just follow the normal dying rules. Yeah, but that's I don't that's, I don't understand that. I was hit with a building. I mean, sure, I'm only negative two, but dude, I'm just dead. I'm just dead. I, I gotta learn to I gotta learn to not live with that. Here's a rule that I absolutely enjoy in games. I actually add this to my AD and D second edition games. The game, master, uh, the game Master may wish to assign difficulty penalties to characters who have been badly injured, whether they're from combat damage, environmental conditions, or deprivation of life-sustaining essentials. Or blood loss. When, the, when the character's health points are reduced to half... Hey, that's exactly how I do it in D&D 2. <laughs> half the normal maximum, all his rolls suffer minor obstacles. Uh, these roll penalties increase to major obstacles should the character drop below one-fifth. Okay, I do one-fourth, but whatever. Uh, maximum health point. Okay, that, that makes sense. This is something, again, I probably wouldn't do this. First of all, I don't run superhero games, but if I were to run a superhero game, I would ignore this rule just because it's a superhero game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the right theme. But I like it conceptually. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, we don't have, uh, what do you call it, uh, major and minor obstacles. I just do plus one, plus two, but it does something in you know, a little death spiral. Pain and health points. Health points have been abstract and absolute power and are normally... Do, uh, 
decreased as a result of weapon attacks, environmental damage, and special non-combat situations. It's also possible, though, to inflict health point damage that results from bodily pain due to less obvious injuries, such as pinched nerves, overexertion, suboptimal organ function, and more. The amount of health point damage that pain inflicts each hour depends on its severity, ranging from 1 to 5. From minor pain to 6 to 10, to major pain, 11 to 20, for excruciating pain. Pain damage usually recovers at the stun damage rate, but under some circumstances may be treated as normal damage. I think at this point he was just filling up pages. Yeah. Now 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 he's just writing to write. I don't like this no. And immediate executions. This is a superhero game. Just don't even read that. Uh what's that? It, I saw immediate executions as another one, and we're just not gonna read that. That doesn't belong here either. Where where's that? Oh right there. No, I don't care about. Yeah, we don't that, care about. That. That, that's that's this this is like exceptionally optional text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, variable damage. Okay, so based on margin of success, so minus two damage multiplier for a similar. Uh, I know why this is here. I tend to like things like this, but I really, really believe this starts getting outside the scope of the TriStat system. Yeah. It's not meant for this. Can it do it? Yes, but it's not meant for this. No. Um, Minus two damage multiplier for a slim margin of success. Minus one damage multiplier for a slight margin. And you can you know that chart. You can go back to that. Yeah, page yeah. The, the, whole, chart. The, the, the the chart that has like eight different levels of success and eight different levels of failure. Yeah. No, the, uh, it's like it's like that chart was only there for these optional rules. Yeah, yeah. To some degree. That's ridiculous. Um, gen generally speaking, again, if you want to use these uses, I'm not saying you're a bad person. If you do, I pretty much I agree with Heathen Dog that if you're doing this in a superhero game, you might be getting a little too nuanced and pedantic yeah. but yeah. if you've converted into your you know military ganglands you know uh, uh, <laughs> uh simulation then okay i don't know why you didn't buy the tristat book it's much cheaper um pushing your powers hmm. rather than, oh god do i want to read all this yeah i guess i have to I mean, this is gonna be one of those things that players are going to want to do wait wait, to, wait, wait uh, scroll down that picture the bear the roman king bear em emperor bear yeah, let me see it let me see it trying to zoom out <laughs> okay so uh dr hulk is fighting caesar bear okay <laughs> caesar bear got it uh, all right yeah um to encourage players to develop their characters through role-playing superpowered characters may push themselves beyond their normal abilities sometimes exerting their attributes beyond their normal limits and other times pushing in ways they've never done before anytime sure. the character wishes to push their attributes uh the player spends one unused advancement point oh oh you gotta spend experience okay 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 i like that risk reward i like it and attempts a relevant stat roll against an average target number 12 difficult or challenging test at the gm's discretion while suffering a major obstacle on the roll. okay now we're getting we're getting weird now if the roll is successful the character is pushed his abilities beyond their normal limits, which could include increasing an attributes effect by one. Wow, that's a lot of. That's not, that's not worth. No, that no, that's not worth. Okay, it. I want to continue reading because I have a caveat to this. I'm okay with it with an if with an if. Okay, keep going. Which could include increasing attributes by one level, accomplishing a new yet related power with an attribute. Okay, so something you didn't pay for, but it's close enough to what you can do. Whatever else the GM deems appropriate. The GM may permit the character to spend more than one advancement point to push an attribute even further, such as two or more levels. The spent advancement point should be recorded because it counts towards the future cost of purchasing a, the new attribute, whether successful or not. Okay, that caveat is in here. Oh, wait, it might be down here. The characters can normally only push their attributes gems may allow characters to push their stats under special circumstances as well you know that extra oof oh, i'm gonna be stronger today that adrenaline rush you lifted up that car there, there were there were babies underneath i had to do better right sure <laughs> additionally if a character attempts to repeatedly push the attributes in the same way such as the example character push in a super speed attribute to accelerate this metabolism and, and induce regenerative healing gm may reduce or remove the major obstacle or turn it into a major minor edge can repeatedly push all right oh no i get what they're doing i i get what this book is doing uh it's having you spend in uh advancement points to push a power or a stat 
and you record how many times mm. you've done it because you're recording the advancement points. And once you have used enough advancement points to buy that aspect of the power, you get it. Yeah, it says That's it right there. Going. Okay, yep. yep. Okay. You know, going. I'm okay with that part, but uh, I still but have my caveat above. But... Beginning, you're already you're already spending an advancement point, which is gold. Yeah. And you're you and then you're getting a, a major uh detriment, so a major obstacle. So it's I don't know. Oh, uh, this, this continually increasing uh, increasing die roll bonus represents the stunts becoming easier as the character gets used to pushing the abilities in specific ways. Okay, I didn't see the optional, so here's here's my issue with this. I want to like this, especially with that uh, follow up down there, right? But it's but it's putting the major uh, so while suffering a major obstacle to roll. If the roll is successful, characters pushed abilities beyond normal limits. Um. Oh, it says right there. Those the spent advancement points should be a, a recorded yeah, because I, I it counts that. toward the future cost of purchasing the new attribute, whether successful or not. Yeah, so I, I read that. If you fail, it still becomes you're partially buying what you wanted to do for later. Yeah, my uh, uh, never mind. I, I had something about the success of it and. A lot of this down here kind of supersedes what I was saying, so we'll we'll just move on. Um, social combat, okay, the social battlefield. Let's see, once the social sparring begins, GMs should consider the following categories to determine which social combat has the upper hand. And this is very similar to what Free League does. You have societal privilege, you have a higher body stat value. Let's be honest, if you're str strong and... Uh, you, you tend to get if your way. big and strong, you are, you are generally listened to more because you're big and strong. You know, wealth, moral high ground, especially in a superhero game, you know, and so forth. Or an occult, so yeah. So for each of the 10 categories that can influence the social combat, the GM determines the advantage that one participant has over the other. For each character, total the number of minor and major edges. Uh, use them for guidelines for multiple edges. Okay, so it, it just talks about adding that to the normal game. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I get what they're doing. Like, you, you, have, you have a normal social role, 2d6, 2d6, plus your soul stat, but you you go through all of those that 10 list and if if someone is it has more yeses than nos than the other they get a minor or a major it's, it's all it's all right here on the screen yeah so yeah that's okay that that seems like a lot of a lot of extra steps that i don't want it well yeah well i i get it but if you're playing a game heavily based on diplomacy and social status and so forth that's I don't fair. think the rules are bad they just wouldn't be in a game i would want to play but it, there are role players out there who really Dig the you know those that social that's uh, I don't I was gonna say combat but the the social interaction side of it and this will help them out. Sure. All right. Social damage. <laughs> what? Uh, a successful social engagement inflicts damage that is deduced from the targets. Current remaining society. Oh, society. Okay, oh, that goes. Yeah. This this is cancel culture right here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If you get shamed <laughs> enough, society will shun you. And then you know you lose you lose your job you lose your wife and you lose your <laughs> reputation and yeah this this is cancel culture uh fuck you Kanadistan not doing it Next. well yeah but but let's be honest it happens in real world even yeah but this is a role playing game I want to get away from stupid real life things okay well there are people who want to play slice oh, of life gross, games gross so all right uh social defeat and social yeah. recovery. Social recovery. Time. Society points are normally returned to characters at the rate of one per hour. Okay, the embarrassment sets... What? The embarrassment goes away one... Uh, regeneration rate can be modified by favorable and unfortunate circumstances appropriate for the adventure narrative. You know, if this was a rap battle, I could see that. <laughs> what? Uh, all right, sanity rolls. Now you're playing your Cthulhu game. There you go. Let's see. We already read the traumatic thing. Setting the target numbers. GM should assign target numbers for sanity rolls based on how traumatic the situation is. So this palladium horror factor. Got it. Consult table 9-6 when determining the appropriate target numbers. Encounters with target number less than 12 are typically not sufficiently traumatic to even require a sanity roll. Sure. I could see you well, doing it, though. It just depends. be like, you know what? It, uh, no, it, not in a superhero game. It Well, no, it, it actually depends. I mean... Uh... Spider-Man's been around a long time, right? I mean, but in the beginning, he was just catching purse snatchers and car thieves and stuff like that. 
but you know he he comes into a room and there's a guy with a hostage and the hostage taker just slits the girl's throat right in front of him gets arterial blood splayed all over his costume i would say spider-man would have to make that role batman would not right i mean i would say that It, it it depends on the audience yeah, I mean, I, I don't know enough about the comic books to, to comment, so I'll say okay. Uh, see, Consequence of Failure and Mial- so uh, successful Sandy role produces no effect, of course. Indicating characters... Okay, failed role. There we go. That's what we care about. May cause the character to freeze, attack wildly, or run away. A traditional mm-hmm. fight-or-flight response. And may also reduce the character's current number of sanity points by 0 to 4, as indicated in Table 9. Six. Where's this Table 9? Six? Oh, there it is down there. All right. So, uh... You came across something catastrophically traumatic. The old oh one God. is real. You see it right now. It's tentacles and 4,000 eyes that it has on its little cone or, or little c- cucumber shaped yep. body. Yep. And yeah, you're I, like, I can't make that roll, by the way. That's 24. Yeah. Target number 24. Yeah. I can't make that roll. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm failing. Yeah. So, uh, and, and it wants to possess your soul. So, you know what? Uh, you just hide out in a little corner of your brain. No, no, I run away. No, this is this is the runaway time. This is the runaway moment. But you're a hero. There's people. No, nope, this is the runaway moment. Those guys are dead. This is the runaway moment. Uh, let's see. Major force life from me. Fight or flight. Interesting. I was trying to put uh, my phobia on here, and it doesn't fit any of those. But all right. Uh, sanity effects. Once a character's sanity points are reduced to five or lower, his mind starts fracturing from traumatic. Okay, we've read that before. So, what does that really mean? Table nine seven sanity spirals. All right, suggested game effects. Let's take a look at that. Horrible. I love it. <laughs> All right, sanity points remaining. You got five points remaining. Hey, major hallucinations and mild paranoia. You're a crazy from riffs. Minor hallucinations, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, trap down to two major obstacles on all all die, die rolls. rolls that's because you see reality as different than what it is in a significant way so everything you do doesn't exactly work the way you want it to because you don't see the world the way it is and, then and you go to finally one, at zero you're just rocking in the corner and that's all you're doing yep you're upstairs in grandma's uh grandma's attic <laughs> you got a nice little quilt blanket over your legs a rocking chair, just rocking back and forth in, in front of that weirdly shaped window that everyone has in movie attics. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. NPC morales. We're not going to read. Th- we're not going to read through this completely. But uh, for people who don't even know what it is, like, oh, morale. What's that? Again, old school D and D players are going to understand this. Uh, although players are nearly always always the sole arbiters concerning their characters' actions, NPCs under the guidance of the game master may instead be subject to the will of the dice. This is particularly true during combat encounters. Since NPCs may flee from battle or surrender to their opponents, remember, not every fight has to be to the death. And this is, goes for your allies and it goes for your enemies. Sure. Uh, especially if their side is suffering casualties in combat or their side is generally not performing well. Or well, I'm going to end there. In these situations, the GM may ask players to make a morale roll for their allies, which is a variation on a stat roll. In most circumstances, an average 12 or difficult 15 task applies when checking for morale as appropriate to the situation. So you make the roll to see if they break and run away. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, and it's different, you know, like normal, difficult. I would even put in extreme, like like the whole Cthulhu thing you were talking about earlier. Like you, 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 have, a, you have a bunch of cops that are helping you and then Cthulhu jumps out. Those cops are like, I'm out. <laughs> they didn't make that roll. It's a 24. No, I'm out. Suck it. But, you know, if a, if a purse snatcher comes out, the cops are like, yeah, I can deal with that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, when to check for morale. So these are uh, some good options here. The NPC first suffers combat damage. Some people, believe it or not, they act tough until they're hit. Until, yeah, until they get punched in the face. And then it's different. NPC is reduced to 50% of his normal health point maximum. Now, you know what? Normal. That is I'm going to die. You're, you're I don't want dead. to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're half dead. I don't want to be full dead. You've already successfully got me half dead. It's not unreasonable to think you can finish off the other half. I'm going to go. I left the oven on. NPC fails a stat roll uh, relating to shock value. Now, just well, so you know, as, as far as these um, those rolls go, 
This isn't a situation where it's like, no, man, you got to stay. If it's like, hey, don't die, I might leave even before that point. You don't even have to make a roll. Or when those effects happen, you just say, I'm not rolling. He's out. Yeah. But if it's like, I need you here. You have to, you have to cover this position well, until we get back. Yeah, th- this is also where, where the leadership skill skills come in. Because you, you can actually uh, probably improve the morale of everyone who's with you if you have a proper leadership skill. Now, how about a group of combatants? First significant death within the group. Notice it doesn't say first death. No, significant. A, a lieutenant or higher dies. And it's, it's going to shake everyone. Death or capture of the group's leader or commander. First That's use fair. of an opponent's terrifying weapon or ability. Like, oh, wait, he can make gross little shadowy things come out and pluck my eyeballs from me? Or, oh, no. Or he opens his mouth and it's, and it's like a World War II flamethrower and we're mm. all on fire now. That's not cool. I don't like yep. that. Cumulative reduction of the group's forces by 50% through injury, death, or other incapacitation. Yeah, yeah. You, you, half your forces are gone. You're probably gone, too. Yeah, you're probably running away. Yep. Yep. You don't have to be the fastest. You just have to not be the slowest. There you go. And then there are modifiers on here that if you want to zoom in on that, go ahead. I'm not going to read them all. You get the idea of what morale is. So so let's, uh, let's move on. Mass combat. Now, I know Heathen Dog doesn't want this, no. but this is actually something that's very relevant to a lot of role-playing games. Not this one. Why not? Because it's a I'm, superhero I'm, one. I'm it's, leading it's... forces. You got no. all those leadership abilities. You're leading forces. You're 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 leading a group of four to six people, probably. It's not mass combat. But I'm going. You you lead four to six. I'm rising the city against you. All right, have fun. <laughs> uh, Absolute Power is designed as a role playing game, not a miniatures game, nor a war game, nor a board game. Okay, we got it. Although the system provides a mechanic framework to handle skirmish level conflicts between characters, much of the drama and flavor that accompanies combat is rooted in descriptive role playing elements. Large-scale battles between armies is certainly an important aspect of many superhero adventures, and this section explores several options that gaming groups can use as appropriate. All right, talks about narrative decision here, one role resolution. Now, this is a very common trope in in mass combat for a lot of role-playing games. Look, if it's, if it's not a war simulation, usually it's minimal roles. Right. For lots of people. We just need to see who's winning. You know, I've seen people do it as one role for everything. Hey, uh, Heathen Dog, well, your unit is over here doing this, trying to capture, you know, the Sword of Doom or some crap. Over here, um, these guys won. These guys are in a standoff. These guys got their butt kicked, and you're going to be under pressure. So, you know, something like that. So you have a couple roles depending on what's going on, or one generic one if it doesn't matter, yada, yada. All right. So large combats can alternatively be resolved with a single role between participants of the opposing armies that takes numerous factors into account. We're going to look at what those are in a moment. Uh, That would reasonably influence a large scale battle. Examine the following considerations that would oversee mass combat with one efficient role. Uh, Fighters with higher combined combat values. Okay. Fighters with higher average health points, more soldiers amongst its ranks. So let's just look at these first three. If they're better soldiers. So we're talking, um, like, Romans versus the, you know, I was going to say the plebs. That's funny. Um, no, no, we're talking, uh, yeah, downvote me. I don't care. Um, uh, America versus Iraq. Okay. We raffle stomped him, right? It yeah. wasn't a fair fight. Well, right. We had higher combined <laughs> combat values. <laughs> we had higher, higher health higher points. Higher than average health points and more soldiers and better weapons, armor, and support equipment. Yeah. We had, I'm not sure we, we had, had more soldiers. We didn't need them, though. <laughs> no. We had the first four things right there. More fighters capable of making ranged attacks. Well, we definitely yep. had that one. More, More cavalry units. Cav- yeah, we had <laughs> helicopters. They had what? Horses? Access to better special abilities. Our our weapons were better. Yeah. You you, you yeah. get the point, folks. Yeah. You get the point. Yeah. You so get bonuses for just being better. Yes. So does it say here how that? Uh, what? Uh, that so, and it's just going to. It's like everything. Oops, I zoomed in. That would be like, overwhelming advantage. Yes. <laughs> our example was overwhelming advantage. Absolutely. So there you go. So we got a major edge on the mass combat role, and we won. Yeah. Um, so you can have final opposed roles and go up. But notice that it talks about here. Now you can do multiple roles. Like I said, if it's if it matters, only if it matters would you use multiple roles. Again, maybe there's a squad thing. Heathen Dog's group is doing something, right? Mm-hmm. But outside of them, how much time they have, where they can retreat to, you know, whatever, where they need and- to end up. 
could and be determined. are enemy reinforcements coming at a certain yep. time it all depends on what happens outside of of the of the castle that we're trying to steal the sword of doom from right if if all of our support fighters get mowed down outside when we exit the castle with the sword of doom there's half an army waiting for us and we're done could be a very bad day it's or, going to be a very bad day yeah. or depend again depending on maybe it's just a small army the one that was defending that area was defeated but the other ones on his team won so it's just a small force he's got to be maybe his entire team got wiped out and he comes out there and he's like oh, oh well this isn't going to go well you know I so <laughs> yeah so it, it all depends and it talked about the the time a margin of success that you can use uh you know remember it's got all those monstrous successes battle ends nearly immediately we win three-day war <laughs> so um and talks about multiple armies if you want to dive into that and again oh charts i don't want to dive into uh character creation options i think we've talked about enough of them but what I will do is I will I will slowly scroll. If something catches my eye, maybe we'll talk about it. But uh, and you can just at your leisure pause and read what you want, or go buy the book. Remember, these are all optional. There's really no reason uh, for this to be the make or break as to why you buy the game anyway. No. Uh, to do fix attributes, min maxing. Oh, min maxing. Some people do, some people don't. Oh, best paragraph. I haven't even read it yet, but the I'll title makes it best. Oh. Look at that. I don't even care what it says after that. This is this is the best title of a paragraph ever. <laughs> it is 110% true. And yes, 110% is a myth also, but it's still true. Alternatively, the game group can take the position that balance is a myth and optimized characters provide excellent role-playing opportunities. When the combat expert needs to di diplomatically talk his way out of a confrontation, or the puppet master needs to turn off his mind control and trust the stranger before him, well, that's where role-playing takes over and everyone wins balance is a myth look at palladium <laughs> and, I, and i really get angry because you, you know people like dungeon dragons third edition was balanced no it wasn't at all people took the same feats across the world. what are you talking about yeah i mean with third third and fourth edition was was basically a you know a, a build a bear for for people who were so op it was disgusting yeah, Le lego characters that's what i call them yeah all right, and we got a bunch of charts. We're not going to stop on them, uh, but that help affect the optional rules. And there you go. Poof, I know that was a lot. I also know that we skipped some, but that was intentional. They are optional rules. Next week, we are going to cover, you can see it on the screen right there. We're going to cover items and gear. I think that is two videos. Nope, it's one video for items and gear. And the other video is going to be... Oh, sorry, I'm reading that wrong. There we go. No, it's going to be... Two videos. Yeah, two videos next week all on items. Okay, and a lot of skipping according to my notes. So, good, because we're not going to read every item out there. So, the main difference between items and gear... Oh, wait, we got comments here. The main difference between uh, items and gear and, and normal characters is that things cost half. Why is that? Because your item can be taken away. Yeah. All right, uh, Saigo says, uh, I've slowly added rules to my game for my younger sons to scale things up as they become more familiar with RPGs. It's not just for children. It's it's for new players to RPGs. Yep. It's also sometimes a good idea to start off with less rules. Let them know beforehand, like we're, we're using a rules light version. As you get used to this, we're going to put in more, more flavor, more contrast, more stuff like that as we add in rules later on. And you're like, oh, okay. And then, you know, slowly build up like that. Both are great. It's an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Anything else? Okay. No, everything right, else folks. was uh, there. Was there was a lot about Caesar Bear? <laughs> the, okay. Well, there you go, Caesar Bear for the win. All right, I'm glad we got through that. Just so folks know, the last thing is, uh, if on the live stream side of it, uh, so people watching the video later, why why are you saying this? Because I can. That's why. Um, is we're going to power through a couple of these. I originally had this down as just one video for today instead of three, but uh, we've decided that we'd rather have a couple weeks off at the end of December. Also figuring in that Kevin and Sean from Palladium Books may or may not come back in December, depending on their schedules as well for another gamer talk. And we just want some time off before we were charged for 2025. So we're going to power through. There's going to be one more of these. That's going to be three videos like this. Uh, but in the end, uh, the, yeah, like I said, it's going to, it's going to allow us to start 2025 refresh. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Look forward to seeing everybody next week.